Hi, my name is Anisal Huck, and I have with me Ashish Gehi and Kevin Kang, and we are Team 15, and we are here today to present to you the General Systems Theory. What is General Systems Theory? A model of set interrelated principles and concepts that explains an organization's complex entities. What it's basically saying is that um, every every part of an organization relates to each other in a certain way, and uh, within when when you find those relations, it makes uh, the complexity of an organization. It helps you map it out so that you can um, find your business uh, like in for instance for business you can find your processes more easily and you can identify which areas you need to maintain and which areas you can upgrade within the system um, further for what the general systems theory is it's uh, the general systems theory is extremely generic and it can be applicable to many different fields so as you can see on the slide, you have the solar system, which is one form of a system which is uh, astro astronomical, and you can't. It's really hard to define it without physics, so it involves a lot of physics with the solar system. And then you have like a biology system, where, where in this case it's the endocrine system that explains how your kidneys and your different glands um, help produce different hormones and regulate your body whether you're male or female so that's another type of system uh, and finally there's the homeland security system which we all know isn't exactly the best system but it's what George W came up with to you know help fight the terrorists uh, history of general systems theory over time um, the early general sy systems theorists were trying to develop a theory that would help explain um, that would help explain all systems across all fields. So they were trying to develop one single theory that would help explain the entirety of systems since it, since all systems are related somehow um, when you get down to the basics of a system. So in 1936, Ludwig von Bertalanffy developed the general systems theory to solve this problem. The theory was further developed by Ross Ashby in 1955. So you can see this picture here is a simple um, system that has a boundary and outside the boundary you have the surrounding environment that might affect the system if it were to penetrate the boundary. Uh, okay, just a, a brief uh, biography of uh, Bertrand Lumpy. Um, he was born in uh, September 19, uh, 1901 in um, Asseldorf, uh, Australia. Um, he studied the philosophy of science and biology and eventually uh, studied biology at the University of uh, Vienna. Uh, he wrote the uh, most uh, famous book on the general systems theory, which is on the next slide. Um, he also published the individual growth, uh, growth model. And he died in uh, Buffalo, in New York, uh, 1972. Um, here's a picture of uh, Burton Lumpy, and here's a book that he wrote. And this uh, general system theory, uh, later uh, further developed by uh, Ross Ashby. And Ross Ashby was born in September 6, 1903, in London. Uh, he studied. Uh, and became doctor at Cambridge uh, University. He was a uh, president of a uh, Society of General Systems Research in, from 1962 to 1964. Also, uh, he was widely known and influential in uh, cybernetics uh, systems theory, which is uh, what we're presenting, and complex systems. And he died in 1972. And here's a picture of uh, Ross Ashby. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background information more on uh, GST, which is the general systems theory. Uh, as we said, we were talking about Burton, Bert Linfee earlier. Um, he expressed that real systems are exposed to 
and work together with their environment and can obtain qualitatively new properties through development, resulting in constant development. Also, these same concepts and principles of organizations underlie different disciplines. As we said earlier, this whole thing about general systems theory is spread over many fields. So basically what the GST does, which is the general systems theory, is it takes all these different disciplines and it says that basically this one general theory can be used to explain all different types of systems. Uh, systems concepts include uh, system environment boundary, input, output, process, state, hierarchy, goal directedness, and information. And as you can see here, we have another picture of kind of like the solar system, which is one of many systems in this world. Um, so how is GST relevant to us? So like I just said in my last slide, general systems theory encompasses all the different disciplines that utilize systems. As you can see here on the right with this uh, little diagram we have, you have symbolic systems, sociocultural systems, humans, animals, lower organis organisms, open systems, control mechanisms, clockworks, and static structures, which is many different things put together. And this is kind of like older, te uh, older systems. As we've moved into, you know, as time has progressed and technology has involved, which is what we're studying in school, there's been great emphasis on things such as information systems. Many organiz organizations such as IBM and Texas Instruments uh, rely on this theory to help them run their business more efficiently. Basically, they have all these different parts of their business and they're trying to encompass it into one system so that when they do something once, they don't have to keep doing it over and over again. It'll all just flow throughout their system. Uh, here's a picture of an information system. Like I said just now, uh, it basically encompasses when you're working in a uh, in an organization, pretend you work in the business field, you have like your accounting department, your management information systems department, uh, your finance department, human resources, everything. So basically what a good system will allow you to do is all communication that needs to be done can be done at one point and it can transfer through the whole uh, organization instead of just working, you know, from the accounting department, the accounting department having to tell five different departments what they are trying to get across. They can just you know, if they have a good system, they can just say it once and it'll broadcast throughout the whole system. So it's really used a lot for communication. Uh, another se uh, security system, another system that is really big in organizations is network security. As you can see in this picture, you have many different components of the system working together. You have these computers, and then you have a server, and then you have a firewall. So basically what this is doing is it's a whole system that anytime any type of information comes into your uh, organization, you know, it will go through the system. A good definition for network security system is its objective is to include protection of information and property from theft, corruption, or national disaster while allowing the information and property to remain accessible and productive to its intended users. So basically, as you can see over here, um, you know, the firewall, there's basically many uh, functions of this system. So each part in this picture is a different function that the, all the information coming to your organization has to go through. Uh, so basically in general you can see that systems are very very important to all types of disciplines. Uh, I hope you've learned something today. Um, to give you a little background about our citations, we got all the information from uh, the websites that are provided to us. We got them from Wikipedia and we got a couple from uh, the fsc.vorka.ca, which is uh, which was supplied to us by a professor. So once again, thank you uh, on behalf of Team 15, and we hope you learned something today.